be curious and be willing to learn your whole life. Patience is a, a quality that you need if you're going to sustain something over a long period of time. Ralph Waldo Emerson has a saying, and I'm not uh, too good at quoting or at poetry either one, but he says, adopt the pace of nature. Patience is her secret. You know, we could have, uh, and the ancestors that have gone before them, we could have done a lot of things that would have probably milked more profit out of the land in the short term. But what would it have left as a result? You know, either somebody else to try to clean it up or to try to restore it. There's a lot of conservation stories that are centered on having to fix things. And you don't have to fix what you never broke. So that's not to take away anything from those that have inherited things that are broken. You know, I look at my own little place, it's broken. I have to fix it. I have to work really, really hard to fix it. The Bean family for a few generations now has had the foresight to say, you know, if we don't break it, we don't have to fix it. But there's a big thing now called regenerative agriculture. But if you don't destroy it, you don't really need to do that. And we've kind of done that with a lot of our environment. We, we kind of tend to use it up faster than it's made. I'm not saying it's all wrong. I'm just saying it's hard to have a balance there. I first met Neil back in the early 1990s. Uh, the service had a program where we uh, restored wetlands on conservation reserve program lands and uh, uh, pasture lands and other areas. And uh, Neil didn't have any on his conservation reserve land, but he did have uh, a couple drained wetlands that were in his pasture. Uh, not necessarily land that was the original uh, bean ranch, but as they grew larger and purchased more land, some of those areas had wetlands uh, to restore. And Neil was all for that. A wetland restoration involves uh, installation of a ditch plug in a drainage ditch. The areas that uh, we did restore those wetlands in they were areas that had recently been farmed and Neil seeded all those areas back to grass. Uh, early in the 1990s, we had a, uh, called the Wetland Creation Program. And Neil was, was the uh, chairman of the Marshall County Conservation District and he signed the very first MOU with Partners for Wildlife to uh, construct water sources for cattle. And in the same token, then we did construct several ponds on Neil's land. Wetlands are important on this ranch. First of all, what I like best is wildlife are attracted to wetlands. If you don't believe me, go out there early in the morning and try to shoot this video. You probably wouldn't be able to hear me talk. They're important uh, also because they provide a water source for cattle and forage. The soil holds that moisture, so in dry years, the grasses and uh, vegetation that the cattle eat are, are attracted to that. Wetlands also are nutrient traps that keep the nutrients up on the landscape instead of down in the lakes or li rivers. Uh, they recharge the aquifer. Ecosystems can cover huge areas or they can be smaller, like a unit, like a ranch or something. And ecosystems are like a giant spider web in my estimation. Every strand is connected to every other strand 
And if you watch a big wolf spider in the barn where they have a spider web built, and you watch a fly come along and he hits it and this wolf spider's over here, he immediately goes over, sucks the juice out of the fly, whatever. And if you break one of those strands, the spider web will still function pretty well, but it will never be as good as it was when all the strands were there. And if you break too many of them, you break down the very structure of the spider web. And that's all the plants and animals and living things in, the, in an ecosystem you know, are the strands in that spider web. We break one, well, so what? It's not a big deal. You break a couple, it might still work. You start breaking too many of them, it breaks down the ecosystem and we don't have what we had before. So that's what I'm saying, patience and you know, not just trying to get everything you can in a short period of time. That's kind of counterproductive to what we're trying to do. So. This isn't a place that is like most, and the reason it is this way is because of the conservation mindset and not to exhaust all the things that we have here, wildlife included. You have kind of almost a duty to the land to treat it well. If I have kids and they are interested in coming back here, then I hope that I'd be in a position that they certainly could. And I hope that they would have that proper mindset instilled in them by that time that they would do well with it, whether or not I'm here. As long as Nate remembers what Grandpa said about flexibility, about rolling with nature, about not trying to dominate it, going at the pace of nature, this ranch might look different in 100 years, but I bet it's going to look a lot the same.